Hey everyone, and welcome to my video series on story structure. Over the course of the next four videos, we'll be talking about the four acts in four act structure, what each one consists of, what each part includes, and what's necessary for each part to do its job properly. Now you've heard me talk about four act structure in a general sense before, but in this set of videos, we'll be getting in depth into each section one at a time, and I'll go over with you exactly what is involved in each piece of the puzzle. Now, this video is titled Act 1, The All-Important Beginning, because let's face it, if the first part of your story isn't good, or at least isn't complete, then people aren't going to want to read Acts 2, 3, and 4. Now, that's not to put too much undue pressure on you as a writer, but just to make sure that you're aware that how it starts matters, and how it starts is really important to how well the rest of your story fits together, because if you can get it right at the beginning, the rest is relatively straightforward. Now, I'm not going to say it's easy because it's never easy, but it's doable. Now, the first thing that matters with uh, the first act is what's known as the inciting incident. In other words, what gets the ball rolling? There has to be a specific event that the main characters may not even be aware of, but there's something that happens that has to answer a couple of very important questions. And those questions are, why now, why here, and why these people? There needs to be a specific reason as to why the story is occurring, and how your main characters will get involved is up to you, but something has to happen to make it different from any other day. Because whether the audience realizes it or not, they're going to want to know this information because it's going to be relevant to decisions you haven't even made yet. Look at most of the movies you've seen. Think about the last book you've read and try and identify what you would recall as the inciting incident. Usually there's at least one event that you can point to that if this hadn't happened, then the rest of the story may never have occurred or it might have occurred a week later or some other time. But usually in every story, every episode of a TV show, watch the beginning and think about what happened to get this started. On crime dramas, it's usually the crime being committed. On medical dramas, it's the patient getting sick. You know, on uh, you know fantasy epics, it may be uh, something, you know, an empire falling or something. But whatever that event happens to be, it needs to answer those questions for the audience's subconscious, and it needs to make it clear, this is why this is happening now, and this is what's getting everything started. Now, the next thing that you're going to be focusing on is introducing your main characters. Now, you don't have to introduce the entire cast in Act 1, but it is important that, at the very least, your protagonist and probably the bulk of your main cast gets introduced in this section of the story. You're going to probably meet your hero, maybe a couple of his friends, and possibly the antagonist, although the antagonist, you have the flexibility to decide whether you want to introduce that now or much later into the story. But at the very least, we need to know who we're going to care about and why, it's, why their life matters, why things are important to them. So the main character has to be given a proper introduction. We need to see what their life is like before the story changes things, what they're interested in, what they care about. And the better the job that you do of this, the more complete that you make their picture, the easier it is for the audience to emphasize and follow along with whatever it is the main character is trying to accomplish. The third thing is setting the stage. Now, now that we have why it's happening and who it's going to involve, we need to know a little bit more of the bigger picture. Show us some of the world that they inhabit. Uh, bring us around to you know, who's in their orbit, what their life is like, what their world is set up to be. You know, what are the parameters to the adventure that we're looking to go on? And you know, the more that we know, the more full your universe becomes. Because we need to see, it's like, are they in a city? Are they by themselves? Are they a loner? Do they have friends? Are they, you know, what's their profession? You know, uh, what are they interested in doing? Is there something they d avoid doing? Are there uh, people missing from their lives? And by doing this, you know, it sort of goes a little bit hand in hand with the main character. But this is more like, you know, the, the environment that he finds himself in or she finds herself in, whichever is the case or either or, you know, anything else in between. 
but whatever the the environment you know this is the environment that your character starts out in and perhaps even the world that he will be heading out into we need to see what we have to work with in terms of you know uh, people governments uh, you know what kind of environment that they're in and you don't necessarily need to know all of the details again a lot of this is subjective but the important thing is that we need to know who we're dealing with where they're coming from what's surround them and why this is happening now now the fourth thing you need to do is establish the central conflict now I think that this is important to do in act one particularly because we need to know what the general struggle is what the main character struggle might be if the, I mean you don't have to introduce the antagonist yet but we have to at least have an idea of of what he's trying to accomplish what she's trying to accomplish what the goal is for the overall book or at least what the goal is for the first section of the book you know what are they trying to do and uh, the reason why this is particularly important is that I find that people that don't do this and I've read a couple of authors where I had no idea what the conflict was even at the middle of act two you know at the end of the book at the end of act two and the problem that I have with that is that these books these types of books end up seeming aimless to me and you know I mean books stories they have to carry a certain level of momentum I mean you know we'll get into pacing some other time but specifically I kind of like to, by the end of Act 1, to have a clear picture of exactly what this book is going to be. Because, you know, if you've seen any of my video reviews, you know that I have a couple of sections that start with um, usually an overview, the premise, the setting, and the characters. All that kind of stuff should be clear by the end of Act 1. Because if I'm going to recommend this to somebody else, or if I'm going to kind of decide if I want to keep reading, all those things need to be able to be something that I can fill out before I actually start reading the rest of the book. And it's important to know exactly, you know, what they're here to accomplish, what they stand to lose, what the what they're fighting for. You know, the central conflict is important. You know, it doesn't have to be obtrusive. You can have it be like news broadcasts they hear about something that's going on or or may not even necessarily be involved with them. But the central conflict, what we're trying to do, what the potential risks and pitfalls are, we need to have an idea of that. In the first act and I really think that's important to do and the last thing and this is what ends act one this is when you can officially say that you've graduated past the first quarter of the book and you're into act two the final thing the final ingredient that is necessary for a good beginning of any story is the point of no return now what that means is pretty much what it sounds like at this point in the novel in the movie, in the video game, your character can no longer choose to turn his back on whatever's going on. By the time you've reached the end of Act 1, your character's committed. They are all in, which means that whatever is going on for the rest of the book, they're in for the duration. Now, they don't have to stick around after the book ends, you know, characters come and go sometimes, but what matters is that by the end of Act 1, your party, your main character, whatever you've got going on, two main characters, anything, they have to know that in order to get back to whatever it is that they might consider a semblance of normal, they have to go through the storm before they can reach that point. To put it another way, most people, like characters, prefer their lives to be relatively uncomplicated. Now, generally speaking, this is why the story has to give them a reason to shift out of their normal comfort zone. And generally speaking, and I know I've said this before, people follow Newton's first law of motion, also known as the law of inertia. Now basically what that means is that an object at rest tends to remain at rest, and an object in motion tends to remain in motion, unless acted upon by another force. So in other words, you're going to keep doing whatever it is you normally do in your life, unless there's a reason to do something different. Now this may not necessarily be a big thing, um, say that you have a new job or you have uh, you know a, a problem with your car it's like you're going to stop whatever you would normally be doing and go get this problem fixed and you can't return to normal until that happens the point of no return is basically the same way it's like you know say that your your kingdom is sitting happily in between two larger ones and they want some of the resources that you have 
Well, if one of them decides that they want to take that resource, you're not going to be able to exist in your happy life until you can resolve this problem one way or the other. And the point of no return is a pretty solid indicator and a pretty good way to be able to make it clear where the act starts and where the act ends. Because Act 1 is probably one of the easiest ones to define because it's got a lot of jobs and a lot of pretty clear ways to do it. Because it goes from the inciting incident to the point of no return. So Act 1 is entirely about setting the stage, getting everything going, introducing the players, and there's a lot of things to do. But it's also very well, very well defined, very clear as far as where each one starts and where it ends. So, from the moment that something starts to disturb the universe as it stands, to the point at which the main character must act and cannot avoid the problem any longer, this is what we consider Act 1. And, you know, it's got a lot of things for you to think about and a lot of things for you to focus on, but this is why we call it the all-important beginning. This has been a video about Act 1 of Story Structure. See you in Act 2. No turning back. If you like werewolves, check out my book Blue Moon, available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, click the subscribe button and leave a comment below. Catch you later.